Good morning. This is Pastor Mayor Luis Vieira. Today in our preaching Sunday, Sunday 19 of April. We continue to our prayers, continue our prayers for the situation of this coronavirus. We're still waiting for the authorities, governors, and our uh, federal government uh, directions of where is the next immediate future for the congregations and the churches today. Um, we are praying for the best and we hope that we are getting close to the final uh, stage of this uh, coronavirus and we understand that uh, they are speaking to reopen again in three phases and I hope that phase number one can start uh, soon so we can start our services in our church, in our temple. Uh, I think that we uh, can prepare for the open air service in the parking lot and probably our brothers and sisters that are looking this video here locally, we can have our church in the parking lot and outside so you can have like a gathering but an outing in the parking lot in the you know in the gray in the green area we we find a place so we can gather together we we'll let you know when that's going to happen and we we are praying for you i hope that you are praying for us and today i would like to call your attention to the book of jeremiah <clears throat> I believe that the book of Jeremiah have a relevant message for us today. And I hope that today uh, we can get word of encouragement and hope. Because this is what it's all about. We want to bring the word of God to our heart, to our minds, but also to bring the challenges that the church and that the, that the word present to the church today. The word of the Lord always is like a source that for one side bring hope, from the other side bring challenges. So today, challenge is found in the book of Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. And I got, I'm going to use it as a base for my subject today. Returning back to the Lord. Returning back to the Lord. This is what Jeremiah said to the people of Judah. In time of prosperity. Yes. In time where Israel... Jerusalem, Judah, specifically, specifically the southern kingdom, was enjoying prosperity, richness. And sometimes that's the message. When we are enjoying our environment, our context. Sometimes we lose focus and we lose what is most important in our life. This is what the Lord said. Stop at the crossroad and look around ask for the old godly way and walk in it travel its path and you will find rest for your soul but you reply no 
That is not the road we want. My dear friends, the calling of Jeremiah is in a context of this relative prosperity, freedom, national security. I want to go back for a moment because Jeremiah prophesied at the end of the 6th century, 7th century, 621, 19, 615, 614, 609, until the destruction of Jerusalem in 586. So during these decades, between 620 to 585, Jeremiah was called. And Israel was enjoying that apparently prosperity. And remember, my friends, again, my job, my ministry, my calling is not to think for, for, for God. My my ministry is to respond to what God wants from us through the Word. What is God's intention? What God intends to do in His appearance in every time? What is God's intervention in our time today? And I'm going to suggest to you that the scriptures are very clear in what God always has demand from humans, from men. And we're going to see leader by leader. And I hope that today the Holy Spirit, in our context, that sometimes we feel that is unmanageable, that we are inside of our houses and we are just limiting our activities to the surviving, going to the market or going to the specific areas. And then we realize that we have, in a sense, no more freedom because of this sinister enemy called coronavirus? Well, God always has been spoken to human in the Old Testament, in the time of Jesus, and the Bible, the word of the Lord to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I hope that today the Holy Spirit speak to your heart and give you word of comfort and hope because always for the children of the kingdom God is a merciful God yes the rod of righteousness and corrections and always God bring us back to what he intended for us to be. But even though God called us and called our attention, He called us with that rod of love, with His arms extended, so we can understand that He's a merciful and righteous and a loving God who desired the best for us. It will be proper today to say in general that the nation, all the nations throughout history, when they fall against 
the enemies, if is when they feel they are living in the first, in the best time of their era. You see, when Roma fall, Roma was the most powerful empire. When Egypt fall, was the best empire. When Babylon, when Persia, when Greece. See, we can mention empire, civilization, by civilization. And when they get to the cuspid, to the, to the, to the top of the mountain of their glory is when the fall of the nations come. It, it will be generally speaking appropriate to say that all civilization, all the kingdom through history has reached the peak and then they come the fall. When in life you feel you have nothing, you also feel you will lose nothing. Yes. Let's take for a moment in the thousands and thousands of homeless people that are living in the street and under the bridges. Do you think that these people, they are feeling the impact of this society today? Or they are saying, oh, now we have more food because they are giving food out in every corner. And they, they have lost no job. They have lost no home. They don't pay the rent. They don't pay the life bill. So life for many of Americans today in our country still linear. They are not impact in a sense. I'm speaking generally, generally. They have not lost much because they have no much to lose. When people feel that they are losing something because they possess too much. That's my point. When people have nothing, they feel that they are not losing nothing. That's the point. So I want to suggest today, quite tragedies happen in our life. Why disasters, crises happen if we have a God who loves us, if we have a God who is with us? Why tragedies? It is difficult to understand how God blessings, how prosperity, the idea in keeping in my life that permanent happiness, that effort to be okay. Why evil have to touch our present happiness. Why? Yes. Why? What is going on today in our life? What well, Jeremiah 6:16. 6, this is what the Lord said. Stop at the road. Stop at the crossroad and look and ask and walk. 
There are four verbs that I would like for you to call attention. Number one, stop in the crossroad. What that means? Could imply that we are going too fast and the Lord is saying, stop. You are going too fast. Too many activities. Too much work to do. Too much things going on in our life, our personal life, that our minds, our heart cannot handle it. And the Lord is saying to us, stop. For me, the key word in that stop is priority. Let us keep doing the most important thing. Doing the most important thing is what the Lord wants us to do. You know and I know that many times we, the children of the kingdom, the church, we are entertained in trivial activities. And our main function is to preach the gospel and to reach soul and to make others aware of the message of the kingdom of God, the love of God in the heart of people. And sometimes, many times, the amount of work and activities don't allow us to stop and prioritize what is the main things that we have to do. One of the things that the Lord is saying today is stop. And many of us, we have been stopped and we are prioritizing what is the most important. And not only the prophet said to the people, stop in the crossways. The second verb he uses is look, look, because we can stop without looking. But he's calling our, our attention to look. And I believe that this is an invitation to do an inventory of what we are looking, what we have. And you know, priority. And then the second thing that the Lord wants us to do is evaluating what is the evaluation of the activities I am doing. It is worthy. All of these other things that I'm doing are important in the presence, in the will of God for my life, or I am con. Oh, I am adding and continue to add and add more activity. So things are dissolved. And the supreme goal of our life is vanish. Because we are doing so many things. We need to evaluate and put aside what is not working. It is time to do inventory of our life. Yes, it is important to look, to evaluate. Let us stop and let us look. Let us prioritize and let us evaluate in the process of administration. And the third verb that the prophet is using is ask. 
No only stop, look, ask. Equal imply that we can be wrong. Yes. When you ask is because we don't understand or we did it wrong. There is some implication here when a person asks question is a process of learning. There are people who don't like to ask. Well, my friend, as an immigrant in the United States, but even I am a citizen because I am from Puerto Rico, but immigrant in this new land for 34 years, when I came back 34 years to the States from Puerto Rico, I didn't know many things, and I still don't know in many things. You know, I ask and I ask because I want to learn. And when you ask, it's because you have that attitude of learning. <clears throat> you have that attitude that you are not enough, that you are insufficient. And sometimes, many times, God is calling our attention to our insufficiency, that we are not sufficient to run our life. We need to ask. Ask says the Lord, if we don't know the will of God in my life, ask. If you don't know what the Lord wants for your life, ask. If you don't know what are your gifts, ask and you will receive. Hallelujah. You know what is that key word for me in asking? reflection we need to reflect if what we are doing is the correct if we are not doing the right thing let us ask the Lord how to do it let the Lord through the word feed your cognitive understanding so we can put in perspective our whole life by stopping and set our priorities by looking and evaluate our activity and by asking and reflecting you know what the prophet finished in the four verbs saying? After you stop, after you look, after you ask, then walk. Walk. This is an invitation to obedience. To exercise our will and move in the right direction. The key word here is action. Praxis. See my friends, Christianity is about praxis. We can have the best by law in the world. We can have all the minute establishes, but our attitude, the way we live, the way we behave, the way we walk is what dictates the truth of our Christianity, who we are, is show by the way we walk. Let me remind myself and remind us in Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 7 through 13. This is what Israel felt. 2 7. 
God is reminding Israel that he liberated them from Egypt. Remember, this is 620, liberation of Egypt, 1,400 Moses. So almost 700 and plus years had passed. Time of Judges, Saul, David, Solomon, Jeroboam, Jeroboam, all of the kingdom, the north then, the southern, now we are 700 years. And God remind Israel. And verse 7, chapter 2. And when I brought you into a fruitful land to enjoy it bounty and goodness, you defile my land and corrupt the possession I has promised you. The priest did not ask, where is the Lord? Those who taught my work ignore me. The rulers turn against me. And the prophet spoke in the name of Baal. Wasting their time on worthless idols. Therefore I will bring my case against you, say the Lord. I will even bring my charges against you children of Israel. Let me remind some historical point here. You know, United States this land, who was the ancestor of this land? The Native American? The Vikings? The Native from the Pacific Island who came from Alaska? Or from the Pacific Island who traveled all the sea of the Pacific and arrived in the central of Mayas or the Incas or from the south of the Peru, the Incas uh, civilization. Let us remind these things. When Europe was in that turmoil of war and the Protestantism and the Catholics and, and all of these imperial wars and the colonization, the gold and Spain and Portugal and France become rich because they extract all the gold from the Caribbean. And the religious intrigue and the inquisition in Spain and that murder in the name of God and that persecution, persecution to even Christian. And when those we call pilgrims, that they discover that there is a new possibilities in those land that they say that they are virgin, that there is gold, that there is opportunity. And in the 18th century, all of these migrations start to happen and the colonies start to come and people from England, and people from French, and people from Portugal, Portugal, and start to establish colonies. Along with that, remember, from the peninsula of the Yucatan, people from the south start to establish. The state of Los Angeles, Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, all of these were already uh, populated by people from the peninsula of the Yucatan. And then the colonization start, the colonies start to establish. This is what I want to call your attention. The manifested destiny. Study. Look at it in the internet. Read it about the manifested destiny in the United States. This is not just the United States. There was a manifested destiny in Europe and in different civilization. 
But in the United States, the manifested destiny postulate said that God had given this land to the newcomers with the purpose to make them safe. The same way that God bring Israel from Egypt and promised the land of Canaan so they can live in peace and in prosperity. They adopt the same concept in the United States. We have been chosen. God has given us this land to bless the whole world. And the purpose was to bless the world. That's why the Baptists, the Methodists, spread so many churches in all the region, including they sent missionaries around the world in the beginning at the end of the 18th, 19th century. That was the purpose of the church to evangelize the world. Now we are comfortable. We are okay. This experience of Israel, the whole process of liberation and establishment and prosperity, that calling, that sanctification, also bring disobedience, also bring carnality, sinful, disobedient. Therefore, God had to bring judgment. And with the judgment, God bring restoration. I am preaching right now, yes. I hope that the Holy Spirit help us to understand that we have been called and we are prosper and we have peace, yes. But within that we can bring and we can open the door for evil, for laziness, for apathy. So the will of the Lord no longer drive our lives. And God call our attention. But that's the good thing that God called our attention with love, with mercy, and with compassion. God sent Isaiah in Judah and spoke to Samaria in the northern kingdom. And they did not pay attention. And in 722, Samaria, the Israel, the northern part, was destroyed and they were taken captive. Now God is sending Jeremiah 6, 21, 5, 86. And he's called to proclaim the imminent judgment to the people of Jerusalem in the Judah kingdom. Israel... Sings, capital of Jerusalem, the people of Judah, the capital sin, you know what it was? Spiritual fornication. 116. 116. I will pronounce judgment on my people for all their evil for deserting me and burning incense to other gods. In 225 said, when will you stop panting after other gods? The capital sin of Israel was idolatry. The question that we want to ask today is, what 
or who are our idols today? Who is my idol? Who is my God? Who is your God? Do you have idols? Let me be clear. Anything or anybody that take the priority in serving God in my life, that is considered idolatry. There is no excuse. We can make it up. That's the problem that we always have an excuse to don't get engaged in God's will. We have our needs. We have our wanted. And remember, it's God need who need to detail our life. Know our need to dictate God what to do in my life. Many of us has lost the first love for God. Serving Him is not a priority in our life. We are too busy. We are doing too many important things and businesses. We have to spend the money we have accumulating, spending because we have too much that we need to entertain our own self. Where are our contributions for the Lord from the word of the Lord? Many Christians don't pay tithes. Many Christians don't give offerings. Many Christians don't exercise their talents or their gifts for the Lord no more. Yes, yes, we have forsake our first love. I always say, my friend, Sunday is the day of the Lord. I am remembering right now one passage in the book of Revelation. And this is not eschatology. This is a message of hope for this time of crisis. crisis. But in the book of Revelation said that the name of the Lord will stop to be proclaimed. And many people will want to hear but they will not hear the word of the Lord. All the churches, generally speaking, are closed today. Yes, thanks God for this way that we can proclaim the word. But let make no mistake. Listen to me, my friends. When church reopen, I hope Oh, that the devil do not put in your mind and in your heart I don't have to go to church no more because I have my internet and my website listen to me in a prophetic way there will be time when churches will close for real let us dedicate and live for Christ. A calling to return to God is what the old message said. I don't have to have a special revelation. I don't have to wait for a dream. I don't have to wait for a warlord or for all those visionary people to tell me what God wants me to do, what is God intended to do. My friends, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the will of the Lord is already in, implicit, said 
in the word. Go and look for the Lord and obey his commandment. Stop and look and ask and walk in the ways of the Lord. Only acknowledge your guilt and admit that you rebel against the Lord. And Jeremiah is saying to the people in chapter 3, verses 13, acknowledge that we are guilt. Acknowledge, admit that we have rebelled against God. And let us confess that we refuse to listen his voice. And verse 14 of chapter 3 said, Return home. Return home. It's an invitation to come back like a prodigal son or like a prodigal daughter. There are thousands and thousands of people who once was were in the church and they are no longer are in church. They don't longer, they don't want to know more about the word of God. Return home because this is what the will of God Come back to Him, to those who were leaders before. Yes, how many people I found in the street. Yes, I was a Bible teacher, Sunday school teacher. I was a preacher. I was a leader in the church. Yes, I was. Return home is what the Lord is saying to us. To those who are halfway. I am. I like the church. I like it. But I am not into. I would like to be completely committed. But I don't want to commit myself. This is what the Lord said. Commit yourself to, let, to the Lord. Stop. Stop. And look and ask. When you have the answer, then start to walk and do the will of the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you because you already has given us your will in your words. Let us respond to your challenge today. To my friends in Ashboro, to my friends in Randall County, God continue to bless them. Bless our family, our children, our elders, our youth people. Bless us so we can come together to serve you, to be with you, to be reunited in your blessing. Protect us and spread your word so we can be covered by your blood. In the name of of Jesus, I pray, Lord. God bless you. We'll see you. And I hope that you will receive news of this reopening. And let us plan. We will let you know for an open air in the parking lot soon. No officially, but just let us uh, start to consider to meet outside in the parking lot so we can share the word of God and at least say hello to each other. God bless you. Keep us in your prayer. Remember, Pastor Major Luis Vieira, we love you. Thank you for everybody who is 
uh, in prayer with us. And we'll see you in the next video. God bless you. We'll see you soon.